Hi everyone, I am Melissa Morrow and I am with the Rave Home Staging. You can see on my lovely truck here. And today I am with Matt and we are gonna do the walkthrough for this property out here in, um, I guess this is probably off in the Arlington area. And this is just a typical middle-class neighborhood. And if you look down the street, you can see it's got some pretty nice vehicles. One of the things that I did notice is that almost every house is for sale when we drove down this street. When we were trying to decide which house it was that we were coming to preview, um, the house next door is for sale. And then there's probably like four more literally in this little cul-de-sac that are for sale. So it should make for some interesting statistics when all is said and done. Now this particular house is a rehab and we ended up finding it because you can see this yellow bird sign in the yard that says Pat bought this house. And this is actually one of our best clients. They probably give us about, um, I'm gonna say about 10 jobs a month. So we're typically staging about 10 flips a month for them. And uh, let's go ahead and start walking through. I don't think that they've done much in the garden area. And um, I'm not here to make recommendations. Generally, honestly, they're not gonna take them. Uh, as far as they're concerned, when they hand it off to us, they're more or less done except for inspection type issues. Now, when you first walk into the property, one, you can hear a loud echo, and two, you sort of walk into a very small space. It's not a space enough over here to put a console, and you walk immediately into what is gonna be the dining room with access into the living room. There's not much to do here, but it does feel a little bit awkward when you walk in. So we do need to keep the eye moving so you don't feel stuck here and it doesn't feel awkward. When we step into the dining room area, it's a nice large space, um, kind of inexpensive light fixtures, but it's about what we typically see in this type of neighborhood. It actually feels very new construction, which can be a bonus to buyers because when they're looking in this price point, and I'm gonna guess this is probably low 200s, not um, maybe mid 200s, that when they see a property like this and it feels like new construction, they are the type of buyer that might be buying new construction. So it's a good way for them to kind of buy resale, be able to move in quickly without having to go through the new construction process. Now in here, the plan is actually to keep the focus on this bigger wall with the high ceilings. So we're going to go ahead and put a, a large china cabinet, if we have one in stock, on this wall. And we probably aren't gonna put a console in here, though I thought about it. Instead, we're just gonna have some large artwork balancing this wall and a nice four by six table with six dining chairs. This house is a three bedroom, two bath, and it's probably about 15 to 1600 square feet. So it's not huge. And we don't really need more seating than a six seat table. Now I said I wanted to keep us moving when we came in the front door. So I'm gonna have art or a mirror on this wall. And then as we come in here, we're gonna have a slender console or sofa table, and then probably a mirror or something that's gonna cast some light off of this wall so that we can kind of bounce that light in and keep it reflecting as we move through. Now we're in the main family room. And as you can see, it's quite large. Um, we have a nice door to the backyard. And then we've got this kind of awkward space off to the side. And here we are gonna put a, um, an eight by 10 or a nine by 12 rug, depending on what we have available, two sofas, a console with a TV or a piece of art, uh, one coffee table, two side tables, and uh, art again above the sofa. And it's nice, I think I've shown this in other videos, this is how I make my notes. I've already walked through this property and I keep it pretty simple so that when I'm going through the warehouse and I'm ready to pick and pack, which we'll show you after we do the walkthrough, when I'm ready to pick and pack, I have a general idea of what I need, but it's not so specific that I have a hard time finding what I need in whatever happens to be available. Now our warehouse is pretty full right now, but there are certainly times of the year when it is 
Uh, very, very empty. I have to go buy items or we're waiting for other properties to destage to pull items. Right now we have quite the set of choices, but I still wanna keep to my old plan. That way I don't make decisions that don't work out in the end and I have a little bit more flexibility. So with this awkward space here, um, what I've decided is in houses like this in particular, they're likely to have children. And even if they don't, then we want to have an area for them to do some kind of office work, a printer, uh, a desk, that kind of area. Obviously we're not putting in a printer, but people tend to have those type items and they wanna know where to put it. So this is the perfect making for a nice small office. We'll put a desk, a chair, and um, some art on this wall and some art on that wall, maybe some kind of organizational system, that kind of thing. But we're gonna make this into a cute small home office. Now, when we have these odd little bar areas, it's not really a functional bar. It's, it's bar height, but nobody's gonna sit here and eat a bowl of cereal. It seems very unlikely. So in this case, we are actually just gonna leave it empty. We're not gonna pay any homage to it whatsoever. A bowl of fruit may go on the counter or something like that, but generally speaking, we're not too worried about um, addressing this area under here. And instead, we're gonna focus on the eat-in area in the kitchen. So in here, we have plenty of room for some kind of a table or a china cabinet on either side. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we address that and give some more function and more storage in the space. And then we're gonna probably put in a round or a rectangular glass table. And I say glass because the space isn't super large, but it needs to have seating and we wanna keep a lot of the light reflecting in here. If we were to go with a wood table, what would end up happening is it might feel crowded or it might feel heavy in comparison to the light bright kitchen. So we wanna keep the eye reflecting the, um, the sunshine that's coming through and make it bright and sunny. So again, we're gonna go with some kind of a china cabinet or buffet in here, something that's gonna add additional storage and some pretty stuff, some art on the other wall, and then a glass table. And that's actually the only area that I have written, so let me go ahead and write that out real quick. So when we're counting out the kitchen, rather than trying to determine, oh, I want a canister set here and a plant there, what we do is we count spaces. So I know that I need one space here covered. So I go one, two, three, four, five, and one behind that. So I'm gonna say I need approximately six to seven because I might decide to do something up here. So I'm gonna say I need six to seven spaces and as I'm choosing my accessories, I'm gonna start counting out how those are gonna to stack together. Basically, it's how many spaces of vignettes are gonna go in here. And I'm basically looking at every 18 inches to two feet, I need another vignette. And we want it to go like backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. So we have some, some movement this way and then also undulation this way. When we keep it going up and down in an undulating fashion or forward and back in an undulating fashion, then it keeps the eye moving and it makes it more interesting. So this is our master bedroom. It's actually quite large. It's a nice size. Because of the price point and the size of the room, we're absolutely gonna do a king bed with two nightstands. So we're gonna have a king here, a nightstand on either side, and this little wall here is not big enough to do any kind of furniture, but we could put a small dresser there. I'm actually just gonna address it with art. And then I'm gonna let Matt spin around to this wall and where he's standing, we're gonna put a long console and a mirror. I mean, I think I actually have a long console, a mirror and a small chair here in the corner just to add a little bit of luxury in the space, but it's actually gonna show off very nicely and um, it'll fill up the room without it feeling too full. This master bathroom is an interesting space. When I first come in, it's obvious I need a large piece of art here. And um, we would like to see cur um, shower, try it again, Melissa. Uh, what are those called? Towel rods. We would like to see towel rods on the wall here. If 
by the shower, but since we don't, we'll probably add a basket of fluffy towels or roll some up in the corner. Um, what's interesting though is this big space that is available right here. And it's, it's odd that they didn't choose to put in a larger counter, uh, maybe a two, two sink cabinet or countertop. But instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put a bookcase or something like that here and we're gonna fill it full of towels and things that will be found in your linen closet. And we're gonna keep it decorative, but we're gonna make it purposeful so that it seems like this is an opportunity for additional storage. We'll put one piece of portrait art over the commode and then um, a couple of towels on the towel rod. And then Matt, you might wanna spin around here to the shower. Now we have no way of attaching a shower curtain or any kind of um, rod. So we're just gonna leave it as it is. And the idea would be that when they're showering that the water's gonna stay inside of there without needing a curtain. So you're gonna take, um, especially with a big window over here, you're gonna have to have a buyer that is not subconscious, self-conscious about being open in the shower. Now on this side of the house, I have two bedrooms, one here and one here, and then a small bathroom. So addressing this bedroom first, um, it's, it's not huge, but it's not small. I do not love the window location, but instead what we're gonna go ahead and do is I've written on my notes that I'm gonna get either a full or a queen bed. I think the price point for this house is high enough that the buyers who would live here would not likely put their children in twin beds. They would go ahead and buy a full or a queen. And so that's what I'm gonna put in here with one side table and then a dresser or a desk. And, and so that'll pretty much sum up this room with some art above the dresser and art above the bed. This room is, um, it actually feels a little bit bigger and the space is less awkward though this chair, this bar stool, hmm. I don't really have anything to say about it other than it's really weird uh, being in here. I, I just can't imagine why it's here. Uh, you know what, we'll go ahead and use it to keep the door open, I think. So on this wall, I'm gonna put a queen bed and two nightstands with lamps, art over the bed. And at the wall over here, right directly behind us, we're gonna put a tall dresser and that's gonna basically round out this space. So now we're left with the last space in the house, which is this other full bath. Here we're gonna do a nice shower curtain with it open, a shower rod, shower curtain. We're gonna keep it open. We're gonna keep it open towards the wall so that we have people who wanna come in, look in here, a couple of towels and a piece of art over the commode. Now you notice that there is no mirror over the sink and we could choose to address that and add a mirror ourselves it usually this seller does in fact put in mirrors, but for whatever reason they haven't done that yet or they're not planning on it. I'm not sure which the case is, but in either case, if they did, you might notice that the light would not be centered over the mirror. So this is kind of an odd situation. So we're just gonna address here. If we were to hang a mirror here, what would end up happening is most of the time buyers would believe that the mirror that's in the bathroom conveys with the house, in which case when we go to take it out, they might be upset that there isn't a mirror there or the seller would have to purchase it from us to leave it in the house. So the best thing for us to do is actually not address the mirror at all and go ahead and hang a piece of art as if we always would, as if the mirror was in fact there. We'll see if it's gonna be up there when we actually stage in two days.
So when I'm considering my packing process, generally speaking, I'm trying to pick the hardest items to find first. So in this case, I'm looking at the bigger pieces. At this point, I've chosen all of my large pieces of furniture because to some degree, they've dictated the color schemes throughout the house. Now, because this is typical middle class, middle income, um, maybe on the low, the low side of that, I know that I can have good pops of color. And I've chosen pieces with nice pops of color throughout the house in the painted furnishings. But with that in mind, I need to make sure that the space still feels pretty neutral and that they all coordinate from room to room. And again, I've done that with my large selection, so now I'm at the point of needing to choose bedding. In two of the rooms, I've placed where I can either do a, a full or a queen, and in the master, I have a king. Now in the master, I have chosen a, um, a t instead of going with a long console like had been my original plan, I've decided to go with a high boy that's gray and then has green drawers and put two chairs on either side of it. And that to me is gonna keep the room balanced, but all in all gave me sort of more of the look I was going for than any of the consoles that were available to me. And then I chose two neutral um, sort of tan colored side tables. So I don't have a lot of color, but I do have a little bit of that gray and green from the overall console that I have to worry about. So as I go through the process of choosing bedding, I have to keep that in mind. And of course I can use throw pillows to enhance any of the colors that I don't see represented there. I'll choose art after I choose the bedding. And of course, I'm gonna make sure that all of those color schemes go to play. And in other parts of the house, like that little office nook, I chose a very deep teal um, uh, desk in that space. And so I'm gonna make sure that I have pops of teal throughout. And in one of the rooms, I have it classified as a boy's room. And in the other, I have it classified as a girl's room. And I have colors appropriately chosen for those. And I'm gonna make sure that the colors uh, all, are all cohesive as they run through the house. And um, I've actually got two console, or excuse me, the two china cabinets I have in there have a very soft lime or celadon green. So I have a good pop of colors in the green and the teal family, and I need to make sure that the bedding and the throw pillows reflect those color choices. trying to pick out odds so like almost like the occult like um you would have randomly accumulated them which you'd think would make it easier since these are randomly accumulated but that broken bed this is how we end up with with things like this that then just like like go in a jar that we put on desks. Is that what that's from? It's from a broken crib that's just like that bed. We just took the, we just took I the spokes. Rather than throwing away the whole thing, I just took them and painted them and, and they became like, you'll find a whole bunch of these like sitting in jars. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So, like here's more. And then they end up in one sec. And then they end up like, um, well, not that. Like in a little jar on a desk. What's your favorite movie? <sighs> My favorite movie. Is this for a password or something? Yes. That you're making or that you're trying to hack into? That we're trying to hack into. We're trying to get into our Comcast account. Oh, then that Sue set that up, and I would say that it's the fifth element. We already tried that, it's not the fifth element. Ooh. We also already tried Dr. Doolittle. Shakespeare in Love, or that thing you do. Or Blast from the Past. 
I mean, that's just normal. When I die someday, Lily will definitely be the one who manages everything because she's going to be the only one who knows how to find anything. 